Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing antithrombin-3 and heparin. Okay, so we are discussing uh, the structure of heparan sulfate at the moment, and also the structure of heparin. And really, we're discussing the uh, structure of a glycosaminoglycan, and both heparan sulfate and heparin are both glycosaminoglycans. Okay, so... Uh, we're discussing another example of a uronic acid now, which is iduronic acid. Okay, now in iduronic acid, what you're going to have is you're going to have a carboxylic acid group. However, it's going to be going into the page away from us. So this is the only difference between iduronic acid and um, uh, glucuronic acid, that in glucuronic acid, this carboxylic acid group was coming out of the page at us. Other than that, it's the same. So you'll have this alcohol group here, going into the page away from us. You'll have the alcohol group of this third carbon of glucose coming out of the page at us. Okay, so here's this alcohol group. And then you'll have an alcohol group of the second carbon of this ring going into the page away from us. And then as far as this position is concerned, if it's going into the page away from us, that's the alpha isomer of iduronic acid. And if it's coming out of the page at us, that's the beta isomer of iduronic acid. Okay, so you'll have alpha iduronic acid, and you'll also have beta iduronic acid. Okay, and we'll see both of these um, it are uh, used in disaccharides which are involved in um, glycosaminoglycans. Okay, right. So, let's get back our picture of the uh, glycosaminoglycan. Okay, so remember, glycosaminoglycans uh, consisted of a polymer of disaccharides. And in these disaccharides, you have one uronic acid molecule sitting here, bound to an amino sugar. So we've now looked at two uronic acids. We've seen glucuronic acid here, two isoforms of glucuronic acid, alpha and beta. And we've also seen iduronic acid here. Okay, and we've seen two isomers of iduronic acid. Now, in this position, you can also have galactose. Okay, so it's I uronic acids or you can have galactose molecules in there. Okay, none of the disaccharides we're actually going to see will involve di galactose. Usually it's either glucuronic acid or iduronic acid. So some of the rarer disaccharides in glycosaminoglycans will have galactose instead of a uh, uronic acid molecule in this first position. However, the six main ones, which are the ones we're going to look at, will not have galactose in them. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to these amino sugars here. Okay, right, so, the amino sugars, basically, this generally means N-acetylglucosamine or N-acetylgalactosamine. So let me show you the structures of N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylgalactosamine. Okay, so, we know what glucose and galactose are, so what... Firstly, what is glucosamine and what is galactosamine? So, let's draw out the structure, basically, and there's no need to go for it for both glucose and galactose because it's the same other than the fact that this alcohol group is going back into the page in the case of glucose and coming out of the page towards us in the case of galactose. Okay, so here is this six-membered ring here. Okay, and then up here, coming out of the page towards us, we then have uh, a carbon now with an alcohol group in, because we're not talking about the uronic acids anymore. And then I'll leave this one, like I left this one un, uh, sort of favoured. If it was an alcohol group going back into the page away from us, this would be glucose, okay? And if it was an alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, this would now be galactose. Okay, so this would be galactose. Okay, right, so it can be either of those two. Now, uh, then in both the case of glucose and galactose, you then have an alcohol group coming out of the page towards us of this uh, third carbon down here, and then an alcohol group going into the page away from us of this second carbon. And then, of course, we have the two isomers, both of glucose and galactose, where you can either have the alcohol group going into the page away from us, which is the alpha isomer, 
or you can have the alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, which is this beta isomer here. Okay, so alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, that'll be the beta isomer. Okay, now this was glucose slash galactose. Now to convert glucose or galactose into glucosamine or galactosamine, you then just need to take this alcohol group off here. So we're going to remove this alcohol group. Okay, so this is gone. And we're now going to stick in an amino group there instead. So we're going to put in NH2 there instead. And this will create us glucosamine, glucosamine, or galactosamine. Okay, so galactosamine. Okay, now, we didn't want glucosamine and galactosamine. We wanted N-acetal glucosamine and N-acetal galactosamine. So how do you convert uh, this amino group into the N-acetal group? Well, basically, an acetal group looks like so. You have a carbonyl group here, and then you have a methyl group off this carbonyl group. And now you need to bind this carbon to something. So this is what an acetal group is. So what you're going to do, basically, is you're going to take a hydrogen off this amino group here. So if I draw the amino group in a bit more detail, it will be bound to this carbon here. Then it will have two hydrogens coming off it. What we're going to do is take one of those hydrogens off that nitrogen. And instead, we're going to bind this nitrogen to the carbon here to create this sort of a group. We're going to have N with a hydrogen and then a carbonyl group here, okay, with the methyl group there. So this is what's meant by glucosamine and galactosamine, sorry, well, this is what's meant by N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl galactosamine. Okay, now we're actually going to want other things other than just N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl galactosamine, because what you can do is you can sulfonate these um, sugars. You can add sulfate groups onto them. Okay, so I will show you what the sulfate, um, what it means to add sulfate groups onto them in a moment, and I've missed off the N-acetyl, which is a bit annoying. Okay, so let me cross that out. So, if you add this acetyl group onto the amino group of galactosamine, you get N-acetyl galactosamine. Okay, and let me move this out a little bit so that I can more easily write this on. N-acetyl galactosamine. Okay, right. So, uh, those two sugars are what are usually meant by uh, the amino sugars that should be in this second position of uh, the uh, disaccharide, which we're going to use to make our glycosaminoglycan. Okay, right. So now let me introduce you to what a sulfate group is and how we're going to add these on, basically. So, a sulfate group, then. If you have a sulfate group added onto something, this is what it means. It means you have a sulfur atom bound to it. Then you have this sulfur atom bound to two oxygens, like so. And then this sulfur also has a single bond to an oxygen, which has acquired another electron from ionic means and therefore is left with a negative charge. So this is the structure of a sulfate group. So when you have a sulfate group bound onto another chemical group, this is what is meant by uh, a sulfate group. So what you can do is you can create N-sulfated glucosamine and you can also create N-sulfated galactosamine. Okay, so what that means is instead of adding the acetyl group onto this amino group, instead what you're going to add on is you're going to add on the sulfate group here. So here's the amino group now, and you're now going to bind this sulfate group here. So you'll have this sulfate group bound to that nitrogen instead of the acetyl group. So this creates what is known as N-sulfated glucosamine. N-sulfated glucosamine. Or you can also refer to N-sulfated, uh, sorry, you can also create uh, N-sulfated galactosamine, which is the same thing where you add a sulfate group onto the amino group, but in this case it's for galactosamine, where that 
alcohol group on the fourth carbon comes out of the page towards us, remember. So N-activate, N-sulfated, galactosamine. Okay, right. One final thing is that we can also um, sulfate different groups other than the N group, uh, basically. So you can also add this sulfate group onto the normal alcohol groups of glucose and galactose. Okay, so what you can imagine doing is pulling the uh, hydrogen off this oxygen and binding a sulfate group onto that. That creates what's known as 2O sulfated glucose, or you can do it to galactose as well. So you can add sulfate groups onto the, um, set the alcohol group of the second carbon. You can also add sulfate groups onto the al oxygen group of um, the sixth carbon up here. Okay, and we'll continue this video, this discussion in the next video.